Hello, everybody. I think I'm about ready to get started. As the music gives up. Oh, okay, hold on. Having a small audio issue. Let me flip it through. We'll move to Let's Chat in the meantime. I don't know why it does. Windows 11. There we go. Anyway. Welcome, Kirk. Hope you're doing well. So I believe we were at the start of a new trial. We haven't seen what it's about. Well, thank you, Kirk, for resubscribing. Appreciate it. So I think from the standpoint of the case itself, I did a very brief look up, not on the plot, but just to see if there's any achievements, and there are none. Though I have ultra no idea what this case is about. So I guess we'll dive into it in just a moment. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Let me know if anything needs to get adjusted. Uh, I think it's the first time we've done this on the new computer, so hopefully things will be okay. We'll see, though. Yeah, the couple of the other cases have been blind, but... Alright, something is really weird with my audio. I know it's coming in on the stream, but I can't hear it again. Give me a second. I swear, chat, Windows 11 is trolling me really hard. I don't know why. There we go. Ridiculous. Let's switch scenes. That time I didn't need to disconnect it, at least. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those ones where, like, I have two audio channels. So, like, I could see it was going to the stream, but it wasn't going to me, so I'm like, I can't hear it. <laughs> so it's just getting ultra trolled there. Whatever. Fortunately, that time I did not need to disconnect, reconnect. It eventually figured out it should have been sending to me. I was reaching to go pull the plug on it again. The girl. Let her go! Shut up! Come closer! And I kill her! Sorry. But you're not going to get the chance. Bang. Monthly subscription base? That's terrible. I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It's the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Name Terry False. Charge kidnapping, murder. Sentence, death penalty. Fugitive movements. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. He captured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. It was a whole year before me and I ever met. Yeah, that that would encourage me to never use Windows again. Six years earlier, Mia Fey, first trial. We're going back to, I think, before the first case that we did? If I'm keeping my timeline straight. February 16th, 9.24 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 4. I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm gonna die. I never should have accept accepted this case. Ah! Uh, uh, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do nothing. I swear, I didn't kill nobody. Harry Falls, my first client. Is it like false? I mean, it definitely is. I don't know what the first word is a play on, but I'm assuming he didn't do it <laughs> based off the name. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now, a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Uh, um, so why did you escape anyway? Ah, uh, Ooga! Ugh! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What's with this weird, enlarged eye? Ugh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. 
I never, never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but Mr. False, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Ugh, sorry. I told a little lie. Oh boy. Well, anyway, I didn't do it. Never killed nobody. I'm sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, uh, Uga. Why does he keep saying Uga? I don't know, chat. I... Phoenix Wright is a very strange game. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm like, I don't... Maybe some people like these kinds of characters. I'm just kind of like... Hmm. And then I take another drink to rehydrate. Ah! I'm really, really sorry. They sent, sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was a trick, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it, I didn't kill her. Could never do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Police wagon? Okay. And about eight hours later, police woman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry False did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. But that much is true. You did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Huh. Oh, there we go. Gee, chat. I, I, this could be anybody. It could even be Diego Armando. But it could be anybody. You're not going to figure out the truth just by staring at the guy. I guess this would be a big reveal for people that didn't figure it out by this point in the game, I guess. Like, ooh, it's Visor Man. You're... Well, why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. Phoenix Wright sure changed in his flashback. Welcome, Dango. That's the mailman. You're right, Parameter. You're right. Well, maybe you'd like someone to play with. Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? Hopefully never in any game ever again. Ugh. That old man is probably still in bed. And he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. <laughs> there are some really awful lawyers in this universe. That's pretty bad. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me. Diego Armando. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see the Godot if you take the last couple letters of his name. First and last. I didn't say... So Diego Armando, finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me? Is he secretly an arms dealer? Maybe. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Yeah, I've, I mean, most people usually at least intern into this kind of stuff. I feel like there's just a huge uh, unqualified amount of lawyers in the Phoenix universe. They're like, you know what? Why don't you just go straight to the murder case on your first trial? Don't ever be involved as like a secondary lawyer in a process. Don't show that at any of the other previous things where they were shadowing the person. Don't even necessarily imply it. Just be like, you know what? Today I woke up and we're going to determine whether someone lives or dies. That's an appropriate way to start off the career. Imagine. An escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, uh, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Huh, relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Oh, is it going to be Edgeworth? Oh, so if it's going to be Edgeworth, we know we lose this case. That's kind of unfortunate. So I feel like this is now going to become a case where we already know the conclusion of. Because we were already told he was death sentence, quote unquote. Then on top of that, we know it took place in the past, and we know Edgeworth didn't lose his first trial until uh, Phoenix appeared. So... 
I don't know. I guess this is just a story case. I feel like the tension of this case is in the negative numbers. R really? However, I'm like a certain somebody who I won't mention. He's earned the reputation as a genius since the beginning of his law clear career. Okay, it's definitely Edgeworth. <laughs> For lost judgment, right? Oh no. Genius. Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Diego Mar Armando, 27, hotshot lawyer, my senior and rival at the office, a bit smug. Valerie Hawthorne. Was the name very close to... Dahlia? Probably related. Described as age 23, police officer and the victim, key witness in the case against Falls five years ago. And Terry Falls, who's allegedly 25. Sentenced to death five years ago, escaped from custody two days ago. Topsy reports, stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between 4 and 5 p.m. Interesting. It's clearly the judge's first time. I like to think he's so senile, he always thinks it's his first case at this point. Anyway, let's go back to the story. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple, childlike voice... Childlike? What? I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. How was it? I feel like he was talking... Well, okay, that's not the vibe I got at all from his dialogue, let alone how I voiced him. I didn't do nothing! Like, I, I just... Okay. February 16, 10 a.m., just a court, courtroom number four. Innocent, they meant. Maybe talk clearly, says Dango. Well, there's Edgeworth, no one's surprised. Oh, come on. Hold on, chat, I'm getting weird audio issues again. I don't know what is going on. I'm getting very annoyed by this, though. If this continues, I'm gonna have to pause the playthrough. I don't really want to sit there in absolute silence for, like, three hours. So, this is the judge we saw that one other time. Who, I don't even know if he has a name. Does chat remember if this judge ever got named? Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. I understand lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So, you're the new prosecutor everyone's talking about, huh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, your honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. Hmm. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is clear is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Miss Falls was responsible for her death? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Falls, excuse me. You got it, kitten. Bang. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor, it was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. Truly horrible cry. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was 
A certain witness's testimony. A witness's testimony? The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. The Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. The policewoman you just mentioned. That wouldn't be exactly the victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. The police sergeant, Valerie Hawthorne. Aha, uh -huh, I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. The truth is becoming clear to me now. Oh, gee. oh, jeez. What is he doing with his eyes? Please don't do that. Aha, uh -huh. the truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. Bang. It's quite obvious the defendant is guilty. Objection! Objection! Wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, your honor. Man, these judges are also terrible. You don't like judgy with the hair on top? Truth vision activate? Yeah, something like that in the chat. Ugh. Watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. He's literally gonna decide the case before any evidence was presented. That's insane. Wave the finger. Uh, he's mimicking very much, uh... Oh, that threw my concentration off, but grah, indeed. He's mimicking, uh, old shouty, shouty McDemon face. Who was his mentor? Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why you? You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Bang. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Oh no. What Why is this coat brown? Is it to showcase it's a diff in the past? Okay, it's Manfred. I remember it was Von Karma. So I, I guess we never really talked about this in the first game, but yeah. So it's like Manfred from Karma, I guess is supposed to be the pun. I don't remember if we brought that up in the first game, to be honest. Witness, state your name and occupation. Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe. I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I finally got promoted to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is more aimed at the audience than the actual case. Hey ma'am, you got any idea how much work it takes? W what is it? You... You're really gorgeous. Ugh. Gross. Excuse me? Yeah, exactly, Mia. You excuse... <laughs> Call him out on this. Not appropriate. No, seriously, my heart. It's aching for you. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be a professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Uh, okay, I, I got it. Bang. Now, Detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir, right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with the knife and died from excessive blood loss. Not much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met here, on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. Wait, how did the victim get across the bridge? Did, like, the... Did the pieces fall afterwards? Hold on, I, I'm trying to establish this. 
Because I thought they were having a face-off, according to the flashback. Okay. He was captured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Something about that did not make sense to me, based off the map there. I wonder if that'll be a plot point later. Hmm, I see. Dusky bridge map added to the court record. Bridge located 40 feet above Eagle River. Right, chat? Like, you're, like, the person... So if he retreated back to the car, that would put the killers back towards the car, but then the other person was somehow in front of him, too, even though the bridge was down? Weird. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. I would, I would hmm that too, Judge. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. There was no blood on the bridge. Then you have no proof they even met there. Your Honor. You would listen to the testi testimony we have prepared. I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on that bridge that day. Oh, jeez. That's, that's creeping me out, chat. <laughs> I almost feel like that could be an emote by itself. I mean, look at that face. I don't know what it would be an emote for, though. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I were some hoser. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, what? Some hoser? Detective, please proceed with your testimony. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess I can always just clip it and chat will decide how it'll be used. Oh yeah, he's Canadian. I don't remember his origin. It's been too long since we last played. He's only been in one other case that I remember. Um, yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now, listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Trust me and get ready. Summary of the incident. Witness testimony. Let me move this out of the way so I can reach out a little easier. There we go. Remove this. Easier. <laughs> I'm let it play through once. Well, you've certainly established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. We'll read the statements one by one on the other one in a moment. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination coming right up. Hey, hey. Settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm not trembling. It's just cold in here. Courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. Don't need you to worry about me. I mean, I mean the defendant, the witness. Everyone's a beginner in here. Oh, you got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all last night watching. All right, so let's go through the statements one by one now. We have... On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint set up at the base of the mountain. Okay, well, we need to know about the unknown person for sure. So let's go back to this one. Hold it! Hold it! This unknown person... You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? I'm gonna call Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. What? The defendant? The defendant called her? Oh, Jesus, eyes. Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, top secret memo she left in her desk. Victim's note added to the court record. Hmm. Pointing to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed. Take a look again. Confidential police materials written by the victim. 
February 14th, 121 p.m. Falls, 4.30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Hmm. So it sounds like he was falsely accused. The, was the person he was taking hostage the second time, Dahlia? Hmm. The defendant, Terry Falls. Ugh. Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Huh. Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's that detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it was... I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Ugh. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Okay. She was really murdered. Criminal stuffed her body into his car truck and tried to make it get away. Guess I could press this. Hold it. Mr. Falls had a car then. Yeah, because we don't have anything on the car. I'm hoping we at least get something on it, like a photo. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? Oh, jeez. No, no, of course not. It was stolen. Stolen from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm. Car thieves. Not sure how I feel about car thieves many faces of the judge there. I feel like that's a chat judging me face as well. This guy's sure about how he feels about anything. This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Alright, so if I'm following this correctly... If he sent this note to her, why is she not wearing a scarf? Whoa, that doesn't look too comfortable. I'm photo added to the court record. A photo of the trunk of false car. The victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Ugh. Oh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. I'm talking about a woman here. You can't tell this from the photo, but the knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, is there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange, do you? Anyway, okay. We're going to present the uh, victim's note here. Objection. Objection! Witness. What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry. Totally forgot what I was going to say. What do you mean? This is... It's the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Ugh. Should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Hmm. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Ugh. Come on, Mia. Shake it off. You're a lawyer. Detective. Y yes, ma'am. This photo. But there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus, this special request. Ah, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? 
can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, man. Can you stop there? You should have looked for it. Ah! Bang. The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? Ah. <sighs> I see the defense is a little lacking. Dot 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 exclamation mark. The scarf you're searching for so desperate. Is it this one, perchance? Ah. Uh, where did you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Oh no, what about evidence law? Oh no, Chad, it's not approved by the police. We should just say objection. Right, Chad? He can't introduce that in the evidence. We can't even prove he got it from there. Trial over, chat. <laughs> Just go, like, got him. Use the old evidence law on him. Why, why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. It's the safest place I know. Hmm. That hot shot sure has a flair. The dramatic. Not exactly white as the caller requested. But as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Hmm. Looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising. It was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth. He was intentionally hiding the scarf the whole time. Bang. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Oh, okay. What? What's due process, right, chat? Whatever. Just throw the evidence in there. It's fine. Worn by the victim at the time of the incident found on Dusky Bridge. Scarf out of the court record. We didn't know about it. The police didn't know about it. But we're just going to let it go into evidence anyway for reasons. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Now, the attorney for the defense has finished embarrassing herself. I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Fay? And Schrodinger's evidence law flick the switch and start existing again. <laughs> Something like that. Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business. Prosecution moves to establish conclusive, conclusively with hard evidence. That Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Falls did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we shall show exactly what happened there. Sounds promising. Can't wait to hear all about it. Ugh, I think he's moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten, there's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. I I'm not really sure why. I mean, I think this would just be straight up illegal in most courts. A genius, huh? Witness testimony, events on the Dusky Bridge. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. Shows the Vic wearing his scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day. Fortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Hmm. I don't think this photo makes sense with the map again, either. So, like... Also, we could look at Miles Edgeworth. Dubbed a genius as soon as he started as prosecutor. Today's his court debut. Dick Gumshoe, homicide detective in charge of the initial investigation. The news to his position. So let's take a look at the map again. Because this is not adding up. So... So the photo would have to have been taken if we're looking at the image angle correctly. Potentially from s below the car? I don't see how else you would get a rock in the camera angle. So the person would have been like roughly where the dot- where like the E is in Eagle. Maybe a little closer to the R and aiming the camera upwards. That's kind of a weird camera angle to begin with. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. 
Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. I'm gonna look at one more thing. Oh, I didn't get introduced in evidence yet, never mind. Hmm. Looking at this photo. Oh, there we go. How would he shove her from behind, though? I don't think that makes sense either. You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. I guess we'll try to focus on that, because it's clearly, like... Especially if he's supposed to be facing the car, then that makes even less sense. You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It's about a 40-foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. Aha! Uh -huh. A potential witness. So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Okay, so it is probably Dahlia Hawthorne setting this thing up. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel them to testify. Not sure how I feel about that. And this photo seems to have been taken by the witness, added to the court record. So, as you can see, Harry falls at both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Bang. Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Not again. That's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? Let's press on this statement, and then based off of this, I might just present evidence directly. I think this is where it doesn't make sense, anyway. Hold it! Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim hard in the back and she fell down right on her stomach. Hmm. Remember that happening once myself. It was really... Brutal? Why does he spell brutal like that? Is, th is that the accent coming in? I would dot 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 that too. You're talking about seeing someone get pushed? Were you the one getting pushed? Doesn't mean that you push someone down like that once. Poor Blue Donna, he's trying to figure it out. <laughs> says the chat. With his mind-boggling tales the way he said brutal. Okay, so that is confirmed. I wonder if he's Canadian. There we go. There you go, chat. There's there's the hard confirm in universe. Ah. Oh. Save your nasty look for the right person. Huh? Take a look. Poor baby. The court record seems to have wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee. What record, huh? What a weird way to hint for me to use evidence. Guess I just present the crime photo. Objection! Objection! At the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Also, I'm gonna take a look at this. Bye. Oops, not what I was looking for. Does she have the scarf? Is that the right outfit? It looks different in the photo. I mean, obviously the scarf is there. So there's like buttons above and below the belt, right? But this one doesn't have that. So it is it is it actually a completely different person? Hmm. Yeah, and fog too. Just a generally soggy atmosphere. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with that soggy atmosphere. So this is the photo of the victim's body that was found in the car's trunk. 
Considering the conditions of the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Bang. Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What is it about this photo of the trunk that doesn't fit with the conditions that day? I mean, it looked like a different outfit, but she's, I guess, not wet? If it was raining? Which, I mean, I think still goes into the th fact I feel like she got swapped out with somebody. I'm just gonna point at her outfit in general. Take that! Naturally, the answer is right here. The victim's coat. As far as I can see, there's nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Recall the testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky bridge was all wet. The victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge. And the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. I mean, I, I think they did an outfit swap. It doesn't even look like the right one. So I'm imagining somebody pretended to be the person that he met. That's what the setup was for, maybe. But anyway. I mean, I think ultimately it's going to go back down to Dahlia, right? I mean, I mean, if we think about it from the what we know from the first trial... We know Mia was trying to get Dahlia convicted, and that's why she had, like, a stake in doing her second trial a year later. I think is how that timeline went down. So eventually, the delicate person they mentioned earlier is going to be Dahlia Hawthorne, has a relationship to what is presumably her sister. So Dahlia either will poison somebody now, or or has otherwise killed somebody in the case. Because we know at some point we're going to fail the trial, so there has to be a reason we failed the trial. So I guess we'll see what happens. Th that's exactly right. The other day, I fell in a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was befouled. Playoff beard? What? Objection! I would objection that too. Objection! I do admit the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. Your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street. Your gl glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet, not muddy. Oh, playoff is in, like, hockey playoffs? Oh, okay. I, I don't think hockey right away with that, but sure. Fortunately, I've yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? The surface of the bridge, huh? Yeah. Ah, a real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman. Of course I can. Here is the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy. I mean, I'm gonna present the only muddy thing I have. Take that! The evidence is... This scarf. Ah. Oh, should be obvious. The scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy. It means the bridge was obviously covered in mud. Ugh. No. I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo. Wow. Wow, Edgeworth. I will say, chat, so far, the flashbacks, not flattering on anybody involved. Not at all flattering. I feel like we're witnessing character assassination. Hey, same to you, buddy. Bang. This phase assertion makes perfect sense to me. Objection! I do admit there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Well, I mean, obviously the witness is lying. This isn't really complicated, right, Chad? I, I feel like they're gonna be like, aha, you'll never be able to prove it. And I'm like, the witness did it? Question mark? Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? Alright. I don't think he's really giving me a choice here. Ah. Oh. You're doing pretty well for a little kitten. I'm still not sure how I feel about him calling the female lawyer a kitten constantly. I'm kind of like, mmm. Mia says, mm, Mr. Armando. No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk. 
The witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim. Or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. Pretty simple, isn't it? False evidence. It's one of those three. Bang. Hmm. What you said just now, I'm not sure I like that. That wasn't me, your honor. It was the coffee aficionado over here that said it. Court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, your honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence for the flimsy scam it really is. Yes, the false evidence in this case is the... Witness testimony. It is a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now... Is that the testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm, that's true. Ah, oh, it's not just true. It's the truth. I feel like that was supposed to be like a really big moment and I'm like, yes. Yes, yes, Armando, the truth is true. Little, little, little clap for him. <laughs> like, you did it! <laughs> there was truly a decisive witness in this case. I'm certain the boy Wonder over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Bang, bang, bang. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. Ah, <sighs> you should brace yourself for the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. <laughs> Wowzers, congrats, you win, Mr. Armando. Oh, yeah, something like that. We're prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Now, let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness, what is your name and occupation? Zero percent surprised. The game told us who this was already. Through earlier episodes. Everyone is so silent, that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it? You look as scrumptious as a double-double in a dozen donut holes. That is... <laughs> that is certainly... certainly something. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. I, sorry, Chad, I had to recover from that comment. Yeah, I, for for those that are curious, I am like 95% certain Double Double is in reference to something used in Tim Hortons. I think it's double sugar, double milk, I think. And that's just the slang for it. We're testing my knowledge of Canadian slang. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. Hey, hey, not so fast. Ugh. As I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Faye, you can learn a lot from this man. He's such a gentleman. He sure doesn't act like one to me. Um, sir? 
Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, my dear? This is my first time, so I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Hmm, not at all. It's no trouble at all. Now then, may we please have your name and occupation? My name is, um, Melissa Foster. Uh-oh. Lying about your name? Tis tis tisk. I'm a college student, a freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo. Is that accurate? Wah! How could you be so mean? Now see here. What are you doing shoving that in her face like that? Huh? But it's just a photograph. Not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll be forced to penalize you. Uh-oh. I don't like the turn this has taken. Is she staring at me? Allegedly Melissa Foster, a college student, witnessed and photographed the incident on Dusky Bridge. Um, and you would be... Huh? I'm the defense attorney. My name is Mia Fey. I see. So you are... Bang. Hmm. Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Yes, your honor. I'll do my best. Witnesses photograph, witness testimony. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then, I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. Well, that already doesn't make sense. And right after that, I called the police. Well, I mean, I think I could just present the photo again, right? I mean, do I even need to press her? They're not even fighting in the photo. That's, that's terrible. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. Um, I was standing right over here. So I was pretty close. I was thinking it was around the R in Eagle River. The word between the E and the R. It's more on the R. That kind of makes sense. I don't think I disagree with that. I was standing in a beautiful field, surrounded by tall cliffs. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Etchworth asked me to. Ho ho ho! The cute camera, just like its owner. Gross. Camera, Melissa Foster took the witness's photo with this, a small but powerful model. Added to the court record. Alright then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. Uh, well, I'm just gonna present the photo immediately to that's when I took the photo. Right? I mean, I don't have a reason to not do that. Because allegedly, according to them, this is the moment a fight happened or the murder occurred. That just immediately fails. Objection! Objection. Witness. When you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Uh... All I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testified that you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally, that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see... The photo we presented was the only one there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Hmm. Hmm. Do she just doze randomly? Or, uh, my apologies, young lady. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He can certainly downplay his situation, can he? I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I, um, I used it all up. The film, I mean. 
You ran out of film? Uh, this photo was the last one. What? Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all the photographs she took that day. All the other photos are of the witness herself, playing among the wildflowers. The witness herself? And who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer feature built into it. So, you took the photos of yourself? Hmm. Remember taking some photos of myself once, too. There you go. Please, no details. Bang. Seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. Wait, just a minute. Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Miss Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Bang. Very well then. Let's get back to the cross-examination. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. Ah, uh, it looks like the other kitten in the room. The one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. In my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. Then I noticed there were two people on the bridge. And they just started fighting. The victim turned away and tried to run. Well, I mean... Don't I just present the map? I think I do. Right? I mean, that's what I was saying before was kind of weird. So, like, if we're assuming from the standpoint of, like, the Aran Rivers where she took the photo, I'm not even sure how the police person got to that side of the bridge, which has still not been made clear. So, at this point, I'll just present the uh, map there. Objection. Objection! Witness, your testimony is a joke. Huh? What? But, but I... I just... Miss Faye, thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions. It's simple. Let's take a look at the diagram of the area. According to her testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run, well then, she would have hit a dead end. You said ten yards, but she couldn't even have ran five. This dusky bridge has collapsed on that side. Wah! Bang, bang, bang. What does that all mean? It's very simple, your honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. Uh, uh, uh. This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court. Objection! Objection! Just a moment, your honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Your honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What did you say? What are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. Okay, now we're gonna get the alleged reason why some of the steps were broken. The very old bridge. Didn't find any official blueprints of it. So you're saying... I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair, there's no evidence that can prove the bridge was broken during the incident. It's ridiculous. I can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, oh, the guy is good. Huh? What do you mean? He planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. That diagram of the bridge was his insurance policy. What? That coward. Bang. Well, Miss Fay, it seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. 
I'm so sorry. Should have been more careful myself. No, no, no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. I ask you to please proceed with your testimony. But I... It's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Word insurance, something like that. Yes, sir. Hmm. Running from the crime. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. And he carried her over to the car, which she wouldn't be able to see from the camera angle. So this is immediately a contradiction. So she's just lying at this point. Suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Hmm. Witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I'm still shaken up. He accepts this testimony as it is. We're finished. Don't say that. Oh, well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. Ah, that's what I like to hear. All right, Miss Fay, your cross-examination if you please. Contradiction is staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. Now, the only question I have is which point to present the evidence on. Do I do it if that he carried her over to the car? Or I suppose that was the only way he could have made sure the body stayed hidden. So... I mean, I think this is kind of a two-prong one. So, like, I could potentially present the map to say that... I'm assuming the darker squiggles are trees. So he, he could have just put them in the bush. It would have been slightly out of scene. So maybe what I have to do is that if it's two contradictions like the last time... Play the body on top... I guess I'll start with this one. With I suppose that's the only way to make sure it could stay hidden. So either I can go from the angle, I'm assuming from the standpoint of the, what was it? The bridge. We can argue that A, he could have just dumped her in the river. B, he could have hit her in the forest. So technically he would have had an easy time if he just wanted to shove her off the bridge. Maybe this is a contradiction? We'll try this. There's a, there's a lot of ways he could have gotten rid of this without putting it in the car. Objection! A killer not wanting his victim to be found. I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier to wait, way to make sure the body wasn't found. Well, what is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about the river. We're just repeating the comment about it's known for the well powerful current, bodies that fall in are never recovered. Ah. Uh, in the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. If ten murders were to occur at the same spot above the Eagle River, you could bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. I'm not sure if I care of the way you put that, Miss Faye. I must admit it does not seem odd to- Oh, excuse me. 
but I must admit it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Ooh. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Ah, oh, how sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method, body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. Bang. Miss Faye, it seems your assertion is without merit after all. Objection! Objection. But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. Objection. Objection! Surely you can't deny the body was found in the trunk of the car. That's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. Uh... Please, witness, go on with your testimony. I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Who is he talking about? All right. I'll do my best. Oh, so she added a statement this time. Okay, so I think last time they also added a statement. So now she has a new statement. The killer broke into the trunk of the car and hid the body there. Well, we know that can't be true. But do I press the statement is the question. See, like, here's another thing. Do I just present her photo as evidence that she couldn't have seen it? Or do I pre present the map as evidence she hasn't seen it? That feels like kind of a weird 50-50. This is like kind of those moments in Phoenix Wright where this is where I find the difficulty of the game. It's not that I don't understand what the falsehood is, it's just that I think there's more than one piece of evidence that shows this. I mean, I guess I could try the witness's photo, and then I can back it up with the bridge if I'm asked. I'm assuming that's how that's gonna work. I'm gonna try the photo first. Objection! Well, Miss Foster, looks like you've done it this time. Huh? Done what? Made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your very own eyes? Yes. And? It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. See, this is where she could get out of it by saying she heard somebody put it in the car. And she could have defended herself this way on the witness stand, and we would have had a pretty flimsy case here. The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. You see what I mean. Even if you tried to see the car. This outcropping of rock is directly in the way. So, I'm guessing what has happened is that... If we're going based off of what happened, because he doesn't remember what she looks like, maybe Dahlia herself? But how did she get the body in the car? So she could have been the one that was in the outfit, right? Wearing the scarf? Potentially, and she could have been the one that met with the, the, the quote-unquote killer. I'm just trying to work my way through, because the camera has a timer. So she could have timed it at any point that they were on the bridge. And she wouldn't have known, necessarily what photo it took if she put it on the timer, hoping that it snapped it when she did something. I'm thinking that's what they're... I'm thinking that's what's happened. But we'll, we'll see where that goes. Anyway, back to the story. This outcropping of rock is directly in the way. Ah! So she did show the map. Maybe the map would have worked too. That's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car. Ah! Objection. I admit the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. Oh, now we're just going into sheer nonsense territory. That's right. It's not high at all. I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? 
This is the location the photo was taken from. Your photo tells the whole story. You clearly see the left side of the bridge. The outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Oh. Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff. Do you still claim to have been able to see the killer's car? No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? Ballyhoo. I don't think I've ever heard that used before. I mean, I can make some inferences as to what it means, but I'm not familiar with that. I've heard of, like, Baba Baloo before, but not Ballyhoo. It's interesting. Objection. Objection! Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact they escapee fled in a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you could appreciate the witness was very upset. You must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. Objection! Objection. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Hmm. Oh. Er, uh, Mr. Judge? What is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. Hold it! Hold it. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Objection! Objection. Finger wave. Miss Fane, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. To err is human. To forgive divine. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. Wow, okay. True shenanigans are happening in this case. Are we sure she didn't lose the case and the judge is just ultra incompetent? What? That's not fair. Ah, oh, save the tears for later, kitten. Mr. Armando, don't look back until the trial is over. Now is the time to go forward. But, but that wasn't fair. Now it makes more sense why she poisoned Diego Armando. Because he was initially on the same case as her. The first trial, that makes more sense, I guess, in hindsight. Okay, kitten, you need to relax. And you need to remember the other kitten's testimony. So tell me, how did she know that? She was referencing the killer who stuffed the body in the trunk. How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Aha! Uh -huh. Well, Miss Foster, though you could explain how you knew that, you're going to have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness? Well, I'm certain he broke into the trunk because there were marks left on the trunk lid, which she should also not be able to see. I'm certain they were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. It's true. He certainly looked like scratch marks around the keyhole. Yeah, that still doesn't work, though. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk must have been broken open. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. Can't make any mistakes here. What she said just now, is there a contradiction? Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> just immediately chat, no hesitation. Melissa Foster, looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers. And even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when. When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally, I finally got her. Ugh. Getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... Let's look at the options. She happened to be passing by. No. She put the corpse in herself. Yes. She's the owner of the car. No. So she put in the corpse herself. I mean, technically that could be true. Well... 
I mean, we know it was stolen from a couple, but that doesn't mean she wasn't a couple at the time. Technically, this one would be open-ended if we were to say that, but the answer that it obviously wants us to do is she put the corpse in herself. There's only one way the witness had the chance to see those scratches. Yes, what is it? Naturally, when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. The person who really hid the body in the trunk of that car was... Melissa Foster. It was you that did it, wasn't it? That's ridiculous. I could never... It was the man in the prison garb. He, he's the one that... I don't think so, Miss Foster. Mr. Falls had been the one that put the corpse in the trunk. He would have simply used the car key. There's no need to break it open. But he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Which means the key would have still been in the ignition. Oh, I... I see. Clearly she owns the car, you're right, Dango. Thank you for telling us about those scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. That it couldn't have been Mr. Falls that put the body in the trunk. No! Objection. Preposterous. Even suggest the witness put the body in there. If that were true. I need to explain the photo she took. Oh, well, obviously, the camera of the timer. The corpse would have only been put in the trunk when the incident occurred. I already know that at the time she was taking photographs. Nope, she already admitted to the timer. Nope, not true. Now's your chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the contrary, not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. So because it has the words, has a timer function, we present the camera directly. Take that! Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? There's a timer built into it. Even a mini tripod. Hmm. Why, it's almost as if she brought this camera just to take this picture. Objection! Objection. What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? Wait, that's not an objection. <laughs> How is that an objection? And when the- that- oh, excuse me. That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed. Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, and the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly. She was not in the field. Bang. Hmm. Would the defense please explain further? Listen, this is a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? Well, obviously she was doing the rendezvous. I'm still not sure how she got the body in the car. I mean, wouldn't he have driven there and then walked at the bridge? So how did she also end up at the bridge after him? Or technically before, because she would have had to have been there but also put the body in the car. I'm just not picturing the order of events here. I think this is where I'm a little confused. Like, I I've already suspected that it was a different person because the outfit didn't match and the scarf didn't match. So, like, that 100% that I'm not questioning. I'm just more curious how she ended up on the bridge there. And answering that question will also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer this question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? And I'm gonna say she dressed as the victim. Take that! Plus they were presumably sisters, because their last name is the same, so she would be able to maybe get away with it to some extent. Naturally, the witness was right here. But that's... That's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Yeah... As I said before, I'm not convinced it was the same outfit. I'm not surprised. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. Miss Faye, what on earth? Your Honor, if I may. They're parting with the victim on the bridge. The defendant fled by car. This would mean there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it'd have only been before the defendant met the victim. Objection. Yeah, this is this is where I'm not understanding the timing. How asinine. Of course Mr. Falls met with the victim. 
The only person with the opportunity to put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. Objection. Objection. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. Objection. Objection. What? I've never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Oh, Edgeworth, just wait until you get further in your career. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. M me Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. Objection! The defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. No, he didn't. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped him help get him convicted. Objection! But since then, my client has spent five hard years in a federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. We're just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? Got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. The time of the incident, Mr. Falls had forgotten what Mr. Falls looked like. Take that! Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification, namely this muddy scarf. Ah! Mr. Falls, who requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you're wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well... What do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? No! Made her pass out? Okay. Uh, uh, where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She had the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the real culprit. Ah, oh, bang. Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Bang. Very well, this court is in recess. To be continued. I guess we'll keep going. I mean, at this rate, I think we're going to be done with the trial. We know at some point it's going to be interrupted by a poisoning. February 16th, 1.14 p.m., just a court, defendant lobby number four. Mr. Falls, I... Ugh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to say thanks, you're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks, we're almost there. Let's prove that she committed the crime. Yeah. There's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. A obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is she's a student studying literature. When one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case. That zebra boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lied. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. And what happened five years ago? Okay, I trust you. That day, five years ago, I dream of it every day. 
This picture reminds me... It reminds me everything? I think they mean it reminds me of everything. Oops, typo. Bridge looks same. Just like then. Five years ago. Why is he talking weirdly like that now? Like it could fall apart. Fall apart at any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ah. Oh, sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It true. I did. I did kidnap her. Oh, is he now speak? Is this what it meant by the childlike comments earlier? I don't feel like his grammar was all that messed up before, but now it feels like it is. I don't know. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. There we go. Your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? Victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne. Valerie's little sister. There we go. What? Are you serious? The girl. Let her go. What? What can this mean? Welcome, Promethean. Hope you're doing well. Shut up. Come closer. And I kill her. Sorry, but you're not going to get a get the chance. The detective back then is Valerie Hawthorne. At first, I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but if it was to protect her little sister. I can understand why she did it. Wrong. No protect sister. Valerie betray me. Betray us. What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping, too. Make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend. My love. My teen angel. Ugh. Can you actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says. Hold on a minute. What you're saying is the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We send to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Now we make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. That woman, Valerie, she'd do it for real. She shoot at me for real, me and Dahlia. I was shot in arm, Dahlia. She jump in river. Jump? I don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. You never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Make up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. Couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. I mean... This thing. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. Threw my beloved sister into the roaring river 40 feet below. These five years, all I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. I wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like. I would tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. Just ask why. 
Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth, that's all. But that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Huh? Where's what? The diamond, obviously. Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really. I don't know. It gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day, on bridge. Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. Disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You could come back in now. We're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. Never found her. Fall by river, gone, Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel, how old was she anyway? Just 14. 14? Guess you're robbing cradles before diamonds. Jeez, that's a comment. See, if we look at this, conveniently, Melissa Foster was, is now 19, but would have been 14 back then. Also, I love that the profile image does look exactly like Melissa Foster. I mean, we obviously know already, but that's fine. I'm surprised they didn't go with this case first, to be honest with you. Whatever. Valerie's younger sister, victim of the kidnap murder, fell from bridge, no body found. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two million. Man, oh man, angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Dahlia Hawthorne, an angel. Was she really, uh... Dot, dot, dot. It's time, kitten. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. Diamond, a $2 million gem, used as ransom for Dahlia. Lost the Eagle River five years ago, added to court record. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You gotta strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules, remember it. February 16th, 149 p.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Is she an angel for good or for evil? Oh no. Yes, Your Honor. I I'll try my best. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. I don't understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... Dot, dot, dot. What are you talking about? My witness is not the only person on trial here. She witnessed a bystander who witnessed a violent... Oh, she's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That is all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, 
Certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? Figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Fay, do you have any evidence as motive? Uh, yes, of course, I think. Ah, oh, still acting as tame as ever, kitten. Mr. Armando, listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots. It's the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me. May I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course. Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. I'd like to... I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Just shaking my head. Hmm, I see. Such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, flick, she lights right up. Very well, witness. Let's hear what the witness has to say. Oh, excuse me. Very well, then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. Skipping ahead in the lines. So again, we cannot be that far away from the end of this trial, because we know it does not end well for us. This is Foster's history. Hi. I was out of the country until the year before last. Till I entered college. Never been to Eagle Mountain before. I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Well, we already know this is a lie, so we'll just move on with this. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Mm-hmm. Hmm, out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing the murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow, I have to tie her to this case. Lissa Foster's history. Well, I guess I have to choose a statement. I guess we could press her about holding a grudge, because how would she know about that? Hold it. Hold it! A grudge? Well, at least the woman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. Where is the old man judge? So this is a flashback, flashback, Calvisham. This is also just a different judge. Welcome, Calvisham. We're almost done, I think. As I said before, we know we can't win this trial, so the fact that there's no investigation in between tells me this is probably one of the final statements we'll be doing. Objection! Objection. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful. Your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client, 
You forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. But, but how does she know that? Oh, press harder. This falls is kind of... Yeah, hold on. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What do you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was. Without some kind of identification, right? Wayne right. Why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. No, don't offer that information. Oh, come on. Edgeworth. Why? I've been wearing a white scarf that day. And he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm. That's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. What do you mean this is bad? She just held us the winning statement. What do you mean? She couldn't possibly know that. This is checkmate. <laughs> right, chat? Objection indeed. Welcome, remote battery. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Obviously added to testimonies. The easiest one ever. Your Honor, when the witness has said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer. A mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. Oh, the judge's eyes. No, that's not why I... Bang. Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. I mean, she's just done here, right? She's done on so many levels. Okay, first of all, she just admitted to knowing that she needed to bring a specific scarf. She got the, the color of the scarf right. And on top of that, that's not even the color of the scarf that the victim had. That's just like a triple whammy. So she's done. Dunzo chat. Objection. This is like the easiest one so far. Witness, I want you to take a look at this photo you took. Blue Donna thinks it's Terrace Pharma. Not this time, Blue Donna. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, oh, you're talking about this scarf right here, eh? Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White. This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh. Objection. Well, it was foggy that day. It was raining as well. Not surprising that she mistook it for white. Objection. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? Man, this judge is so bad at his job. It's true the scarf doesn't look white, but... There's only one explanation for this mix-up. Oh no, it's the... Is the what color is the stress thing all over again. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... Obviously, we're gonna present the victim's note that talked about the color of the scarf here. So we're just gonna slam dunk this one. Take that! Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Exactly. There is no reason she would have. But she did. And that's the important thing. Right, chat? Hmm, I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Fall's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says that, wear a white scarf for identification. White scarf. Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Ugh. Ah! Well, Miss Foster? No! Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. 
I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one, the person who wrote the note. Valerie Hawthorne is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right. A person that no one would have suspected, except for people that played the other episodes of this trial. Have you figured it out, Kit? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... I mean, now here's the question. Do I present most of Foster or Hawthorne? I guess I present Hawthorne. They're the same person. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne. Never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name right there. What's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne. Uh, Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago, and she fell off the dusky bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. Objection! Objection! She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. Like our court system is literally a giant kangaroo. I mean, it's not too far off, honestly, in the Phoenix Wright universe. Objection! Objection! The fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. Ah! Objection. Objection! Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying... But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. Bang. This girl's in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Wha- what Ah, oh, nice work. It's like tossing a grenade into a three-alarm fire. No way, says chat. But unless you can tie all those loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit-and-run arsonist. I- I understand. I can expose her true nature. I can turn this whole case on its head. Oh, well, I guess I don't really have a shocked emo, do I? Let me make a small note. I'm gonna have to add that later. New emote. I'm gonna try Phoenix Blind again. As well as, uh, shock, Shocked Face? I have to think about what would be a good emote for that. But anyway, let's reread this. If I can expose your true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now is my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Hmm, hmm. Hmm. Witness, just who are you anyway? I... I... I'm... I didn't think it'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. According to chat, she's a ghost. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue this matter this far. I mean... You don't... you don't mean... Yes. The prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. 
Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ah, oh, looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? You hadn't revealed her secret. He wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Estelia Hawthorne. I mean, this case should just get thrown out immediately. But, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well. But, well, as you can see... Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the curtain case. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. It, it's pretty bad. I would agree, Dango. I don't know how this doesn't void multiple cases. This just looks super bad on the judge side. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Objection! Objection. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Objection! Objection. Really, Miss Faye. I must say, your strategy here is painfully obvious. I'm trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you! Please, let's take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later, Elia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. Her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. Not really. She now has evidence. Because now, now if the other police officer knew she was alive, they could just kill her because she knew about the diamond. I mean, I feel like this is just kind of like... Check, 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 check. Right, chat? Like, okay. What? Dang. I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Well, that's because you're an idiot. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? We're going to present the diamond, right? Well, you see. I thought I was winning. But somehow he's turned it around on me. No, he didn't. Just present the diamond. Are you being dumb? Like right here. Like right here. <laughs> it's a two million dollar motive. Ah. Oh, I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. No, I don't. <laughs> Wait, I know where this case is going. I don't need assistance. Don't give me the handicap. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. That wasn't me. It was this guy. This crazy coffee addict. I'm like, I feel like I need like the, the palm and face. Like, yes. We we lit we literally have the motive. We literally have it. It's right there. Objection, Objection indeed. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Ah. Oh, what makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Ah, oh, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Ah, oh, the rashness of youth. How charming. It's coming from someone younger than me. Bang. Now then, let's not waste any more time, Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? So... Here's the question. So... This is one of those ones where, like, it's te it's technically the diamond. It This is technically true, but... I think the game wants me to present the note first. So the, the whole truth reference in the victim's note is about the diamond. So it's like one of those ones where I feel like Phoenix is trying to get me with a gotcha here. Ultimately, we're going to present the diamond, but I'm going to present the victim's note first. Take that. Take that! The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. 
Because we have to set up the the hiding of the truth, and then what the truth was is the diamond, in that order, I think. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. Whole truth. There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That reason Dahlia, Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. Objection. Terrific story, Miss Faye. You like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Faye. What was the secret that was so important? Okay, now I'd like to present the diamond. Where's your evidence? Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know the secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago. We believe it will explain a lot of things. Such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Uh. Bang. Very well. I grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but could you enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? Oh, the maple leaf for Canada. Get it there. Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. <laughs> that is a statement. Not those womanly wiles, chat. Witness testimony five years ago. I mean, this feels like we're at the end of the case right here. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. Well, I mean, that's just obviously not true. Are we gonna get an updated map? In order to present the map, or do I just present it anyway? I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Hmm. Kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. We're to believe after all that she murdered her sister. Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Ah, we're not allowed to fight. Now let's twist some arms. Listen up, we've still got that info. That ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. I'll say you've forgotten already. In fact, the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Harry Falls told us that in the lobby. Funny thing she says. Oh, is he gonna drink poison because she tells him to? Is that what's gonna happen here? Yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen. I think our, I think our defendant's gonna die before we get to the end of the trial. Cause there's no, there's literally no other way I could see how he, she would get out of this, other than the, other than our person mysteriously dies and they drop the case. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. Hmm. I mean, am I allowed to do this? Let's see if I get a penalty. So like, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why this doesn't make sense, but it's weird because we also don't have evidence of the five years ago thing. Do you know what I mean? Like we never updated the map to say like, oh, can you show us on the map where you were? Like we never got an updated evidence piece, which is why this could be wrong. I think I know what it wants, but I feel it's a little weird with the evidence we were given. I'll try presenting. Worst thing that happens, I'll just try again. Objection! 
Objection. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle's River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true. Oh, the push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. Guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said that's impossible. Impossible? I asked the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. The bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years, which I think also invalidates the earlier testimony if we're accepting this is true. I'm actually a little confused here, chat. Was it, was it, didn't Edgeworth literally argue this like five or six statements ago that we couldn't prove the condition of the bridge five years ago? And now we're asserting the bridge is the same as it was five years ago? If he doesn't object to this, this feels like kind of a plot hole on his side. I'm really not sure why he wouldn't object to that. The bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. Right? Like, like they made that a plot point. It's not like I forgot. It was like an hour ago. If someone had pushed you from behind, as you claim, instead of being carried away by the river, you would have been smashed by the bedrock below. Most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? Really? He's not going to object to that comment we just made? No? And then, and then, like, and the bigger problem I have with what we're doing here, we never established where on the bridge we were or that the bridge was in that state. So I feel like the same objection that happened earlier when we brought up the bridge would still invalidate this. So if he does not object here, I'm calling absolute shenanigans and the writers definitely forgot. I don't believe it or buy it at this point unless this gets argued within the next two statements the very notion that my client push you from behind is impossible blue don is still confused ah okay here we go what's his objection your honor this event occurred five years ago why for all we know the water level in the river may have been higher back then no f i'm gonna give the writers an f on this case objection but it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. Oh, that's a bad argument. Ugh. Bang. You're right. The events occurred just as the witness has testified. The defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Wow, he just really let that one go, huh? Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Uh, I... I, uh... You see, I... Objection. Just a moment, your honor. It's true the witness testified the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated she fell from the back of the end of the bridge. Okay, that's a better argument. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's possible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now. Wow. Prosecutor hard, hard bailing out the witness there. That's actually pretty absurd. When I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge side wires. You can't be serious. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order in the court. Seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Objection! Objection! Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's possible Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say, that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. What? I... I feel like this... Okay, I feel like the first half of the trial was fine. 
I don't like how they're just... How, why are we presenting evidence from the current crime to the crime five years ago without introducing new evidence? This just feels really improper. I'm not liking this case for that reason. Like, I understand what they're saying, and I understand from the standpoint that we are telling them that it is a setup. But at the same time, we're not relying on police reports or photos or even testimony of where they are in the bridge. We didn't have her go up and tell us where she was in order to establish what we're doing here. I'm going to say, chat, this is this is pretty not good for a case this deep in the game. Like, this would still be a bad case even for an intro case. Like, I understand this is very much a story-based case. But in terms of, like, the logic of this case, I think this might be the worst one so far. We're literally about to present evidence unrelated to the actual time of the events. Like... Like, bridge unchanged for five years. I I'm like... Like, can we, can we prove that the, the, the cord was this tall? I mean, it doesn't really prevent her from falling off the side, if that's what they want here. If, if our assumption is to say she can't go over the, the railing because it's too high, we could present this here. But again, like, if we're following the logic from earlier in the case, we shouldn't be allowed to present this for the same reason stating that we can't state to the condition of the bridge at that time. Like, maybe there, maybe there was a cut cord at the time, and it's since been fixed, and then the things fell later. I feel like this is one of the flimsiest points where we do an objection, to be honest with you. So, I guess we present the witness's photo, even though I feel like we should not be allowed to get away with this. Take that. Take that. Thank you, Nate. Your Honor, all the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. Right, and if any of them had been cut or damaged at the time, this would invalidate our entire point. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! Objection. But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. Objection! So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. And more importantly, Charlie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh. So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That is clearly impossible. Ugh. Dang. Order, order. What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Why did he make the tiger sound? Objection. Indeed. What do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Objection. Perhaps. But still, that's exactly what you did. You're probably confident that you can handle the swift current. Even more so. Witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Objection. Oh, then what was it? What is so important she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of Eagle River. Okay, finally we're going to present the diamond. Take that! Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Ah! N no! It, it can't be! Yes. Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars. She was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. Bang. the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river. With the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Why, that's... that's simply ridiculous. Bang, bang, bang. 
Order, order, order. Objection! Your Honor, five years ago, Winnis was only 14 years old. You really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? Yes. What does age have to do with it, Edgeworth? This woman is a demon. And there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? Objection! But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister, Dahlia. Then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do. She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Who is that? Laughing at a time like this. There we go. Forgive me. It's just hilarious. Witness? Is that you? You amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Fey. Why is that all capitals? I guess to assert that she knows our last name. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally. You have the evidence to back it up, don't you? E evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? I don't know. What did you do with it, Dahlia? You can't provide evidence to at least show that. Hmm. Well, Miss Faye? I... I don't know. What a joke, you, Miss Fay. Are you stupid or something? Ugh. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Bang. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I'm forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. On what grounds? Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of me and there's nothing I could do about it. And you could just call in the other person before he dies inevitably. Ah. Without evidence, the trial is over. Who decided that? Yeah, can we ask for a recess? This seems really unfair, Chad. I'm gonna, like, if we're gonna put ourselves in the Phoenix Wright universe, we now have to prove that something that happened five years ago is now connected to this. So why would we have brought evidence into this when they even hid the identity of the witness? This just feels kind of dumb. <laughs> Start to finish. Like, this is like, I know they're trying to take it like, oh, we're in a corner, but I'm like, this universe is just so messed up. Mr. Armando, I can't decide if it's, like, how much of his satire, how much of his irony, how much of it is bad writing. I'm not really sure. Like, I know things are rigged against the defense, but this is just stupid. <laughs> like, this is, this is going beyond the realms of believability for me very rapidly. Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. Testimony? Elvishan says, putting myself in the universe, let me find a weird catchphrase and, and close choice. Pretty much. I don't know, chat. Like, the other ones are at least, like, semi-grounded in the, in the basis of what's happening. This is just ridiculous. I'm not sure if it's going into quite clown show territory levels of disappointment. But I'm definitely not happy with this case. On the day in question, Ellie Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Shed her body in the trunk of Mr. Fall's stolen car, then went to meet with him. 
disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Dango says, I wear my tie upside down and I'm simply known as wild, even though I'm very calm. Hermeter says, hold on, have to get a gimmick and become a horrible character. Yeah. Just, I don't know, chat. I I'm feeling very disappointed with this one. I think from, like, a plot element of establishing the characters, it's probably, like, a B plus. In terms of how this case is playing out, like, this might honestly be almost borderline F to me. Like, I think I know what they were trying to do, but, like, the way that they gave us the evidence, the evidence we're presenting, and then the way that they seem to just kind of forget earlier objections is just kind of... I don't know. I don't know. That's really bothering me more so than other cases. And we went through the awfulness of the second game. So the fact that this is bothering me more than some of the second game's cases should say something. Yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who could testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. I mean, like, so this is now bringing up a question. When he was arrested, did he not give testimony originally? Like, I feel like this is just opening up a whole bunch of holes. Like, I know we as the viewer, allegedly, are learning these events as they play out. But, like, what happened the first time? Why are we now having to get him to testify again? Did he not testify in the other trial? Could we not get evidence from that trial and go back into it? It just feels very odd to me, chat. Like, we've done that before, where we get testimony from other things, and we present it by going into the original uh, records, like when we did in the first game to go into the evidence room, for example. But we're not doing that here, which is just really awkward. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. My name is Absolute Panic, and I'm totally calm. There we go. Chat figuring it out. Like, who is the attorney for the previous trial? I'm assuming it had to be Grossberg. Who is the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? Why am I presenting this? Game, are you thinking I'm not paying attention? I mean, you know what? Let's, let's present Diego. What were you doing, Diego? <laughs> Why didn't you present evidence from before? No, we'll present Terry False. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness. Yes. We'd like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant. There's only one person that can shed any further light on this situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne. Or whether it was in fact her younger sister, Dahlia, disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. Okay, yeah, he's definitely not going to survive this trial. And that person is... Terry Falls. It's like false and also falls, like fall guy. But also false, falsely accused, I guess. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Alright, Chad, how long do you think it's going to be before he dies? <laughs> do you think I'm going to be able to present a piece of evidence, two pieces of evidence? What do you think, Chad? Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Um, I don't believe it. No way. Three seconds. Elliot died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dolly is very much alive. You were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne, or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia! Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised never, ever betray each other. Terry? Dahlia! It's, it's true. You are alive. You don't trust me anymore. That makes me sad. Tell the truth, the real truth. I, I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it. 
You should already know. But there is one thing I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Duh. Dahlia. Bang. Allow Mr. False to testify once and only once. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. He dot dot dots. Witness, gah! Ah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Wah, wah, wah! Water, please, water! Hmm? Can't talk. Need water. Oh yeah, he definitely took something. Ah, oh well. Guess I'll have, it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bittersweet than hell itself. Ugh. Oh, is he gonna drink the coffee of Armando? We know Armando got poisoned. But maybe he shared the poison with the victim at this point and they both get it, quote unquote. Who Terry Falls saw. That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. Watch my car from bridge. Never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked. Then she left. That was... That was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. You think she would do the same for you? Objection. That's enough, Miss Faye. Last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Fay, please proceed with your cross-examination. This is how you want it to end, Mr. Falls. Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence. Which he shouldn't even be convicted of anymore because the person he killed is still alive. This is like so many plot holes. <laughs> it's bothering me so much, chat. Are we really not going to comment on that further? There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten. I think. Okay, well, apparently he's still guilty for some reason. So, like, roll my eyes. Well, I'm just gonna present the witness photo. I'm not gonna bother pressing him. Objection! Objection! When you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So when you waited on the bridge, you're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well, then I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Oh, uh, what? Wha, wha, wha. Oh, I'd love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Fay. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. Perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? But that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Uh, 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 uh. Um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. Just want the truth. Got there around four o'clock, it's true. I... I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to the special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. Memento? Five years ago, hidden under a base of tree there. A special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. Uh-oh. The poison bottle. This little bottle on your necklace is a memento. Quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at four o'clock. But he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Ugh. With that much time. Dolly Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. Okay, so now that explains where the body was being put in the car. I was not figuring that out from the timeline. That answered my only question about the order of events now. No! Indeed. There certainly was enough time for it. Still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. 
Yup, he's gonna die any second now. There we go. Erp. Huh? Mr. Falls? There we go. Coffin blood. GG. That's enough. Please. Witness? I promised her. Five years ago. If it ever happens, we can't trust each other no more, then... We're supposed to drink bottle. We all... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So... Let me get this straight. We had that whole first case in the game where we didn't know whether or not the bottle was poison. But in this case, which happened before the first case of the game, someone literally dies after they admit drinking from the bottle? Are you serious? Okay, now, now this case gets an F. <laughs> what was the point of the first trial if we knew this? He literally told us! What? Oh, big F in the chat. What is that? Stupid. Go rewatch that first case, chat. We're like, oh, gee, how could she have gotten a poison method into the court? And it's like, but he just told us. He just told us. Come on. Come on, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Did different writers write this? This is just upsetting, honestly. I think this is now officially. I would have thought the maid cafe would have been my least favorite case. This is now my least favorite case. The fact that it makes all the surrounding cases worse, I think upsets me even more from a plot standpoint. How dare they make us go through the point of showing that the bottle could be opened up and everything else when some guy literally told us on the stand moments before he dies of poison. Idiots. Absolute idiots. No, stop the trial. Your Honor, we need a recess. I... I was stupid, couldn't keep promise, so I did it. I drank this. No, we're so close, just a little more. I was gonna prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia, again. Out what? No, she didn't die the first time, you idiot. Mr. Falls. Mr. Ar Armando. Thanks for the coffee. Mr. Falls! I'm, I'm very disappointed in this case. And so my first trial ended, suddenly and tragically. That goes, the biggest question I'm playing through is how do you have the necklace that confiscate that when you go to prison? I think what they're saying is... How did he get it? They said there's two. I'll give him a, I'll give him that dango. So he had to specifically go to the temple to get his version of the necklace, where she had the necklace because it's the second one. So I I think that is not a plot hole. But yeah, big F in the chat otherwise. This is dumb. So I'm thinking from the standpoint of because we've seen people carry dumber things into the Phoenix Wright jail. I'm not sure why they wouldn't have taken it. it well, no, 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 they wouldn't have... Well... I don't know. I guess in theory they could have confiscated it, maybe. But again, we've seen people with, like, cell phones and stuff. I'm just gonna chalk that under police incompetence. Remember, the like, the one person had, like, the, uh, what was it called? The cell phone in the, in the second game. So I just don't think they care, honestly. So yeah, that, that's also, there's two of them, and then the one that he did retrieve right before he got arrested, specifically. Not the first time he was arrested, but the second time he was arrested. I think they just don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. Which again, is also pretty bad writing, to be honest. It, it's, it's in canon in this game for them to have stupid things in jail, but it's also bad writing. Ended up with a wound that cut so deeply into my soul, I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. The one person. The true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne. She left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. Unforgivable, that witch. Mr. Armando, we were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. 
It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kid. You're going to make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Armando dot dot dot. Mia. Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Just in case you can't figure out it's Godot, they're gonna play his theme finally. <laughs> gonna break the coffee mug? Yeah! Yeah, I wanted the dramatic coffee break. I'm glad they did that. That made me happy. The only time when a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando. Oh my gosh, Chad, he was so mad he destroyed his only coffee cup. No matter how tough the case is, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time, and you file them away and eventually forget them. I know. Now it explains- so I guess in the future, he <laughs> since he destroyed his favorite mug, he's now gonna purchase like a million of them. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. So he's in a hospital, it looks like. I didn't comment on this earlier. Doesn't it? It looks like he's that's an IV behind him. So I'm assuming he gets attacked in the next case. And we're now going to flash forward to the point where he gets attacked. We're going to flash... Yeah, flash back to the point he was attacked and flash forward back to the scene, I would imagine. Alright, so that's, I guess, the end of the tr the episode. Well, I guess we'll give our thoughts. I don't feel like doing the final case, since I know that's going to take forever. Bridge to the turnabout. Oh, no. It's going to have more spiritualism. Oh, just come on. Well, I am not looking forward to this episode at all. It's, it's down there with Maid Cafe. I really don't want to do one where they're just constantly body swapping. I know, that, that, sums, that sums up how I feel. Okay, we're going to save, and we're going to quit, because I don't really want to continue today. We'll continue next week. So let's give our final thoughts on this case. I'm glad the sound effect played twice, because I switched scenes. Uh, honestly, this might be my least favorite. I would have thought for sure the Maid Cafe would have been my least favorite case in this game. I actually think it's this one. I think the way it undermines the story, the flimsiness of the evidence presented, the lack of objections from the other side, the fact that, like, we literally just kind of throw evidence in in spite of literally an objection an hour ago is just, like, I don't know. I guess this might be the big reveal for people that didn't figure it out. It was Diego Armando as Godot, the prosecutor. But, like, this kind of went in with, like, no stakes. We knew she couldn't possibly win the trial. We already knew who the we already knew who the murderer was essentially super early on. We basically know how the trial will go according to what happened later on. And then on top of that, it undermines a kind of big point of the first case of the game of us like trying to figure out whether or not the bottle had poison in it. When we were literally told that, even though she obsessed over this case for like a year, I just feel and the characterization of some of the characters was also terrible. Like, Edgeworth calling the other person a bimbo, for example, was ridiculous. Um, I like that he did, like, the finger wags, like he was more under the mindset of Von Karma. That was, like, the only thing I liked in the case. I thought it was nice to kind of see him transition through. But the amount of ridiculous things he got away with in this case allegedly as a genius was also kind of upsetting to me to be honest it's one of those things where like when you don't know how to write smart characters you have to make everybody else dumb 
Like, that has happened a few times in games before, and this case had it in spades. So I do not like the writing of this case, pretty much start to finish. I think maybe the first third of this particular case was fine. I like that there was no investigation mode, but at the same time, it's like, think about every other BS moment in Phoenix Wright where we're at least allowed a day to continue. Like, it doesn't make sense why Phoenix, in much more difficult scenarios with even less evidence, is allowed another day to investigate an open-ended thing, but we're not allowed to do it with her. I don't really get what the reasoning is for that other than like, but thou must be in a corner. So I didn't really like that in context of the rest of the Phoenix Wright cases. As I said before, we've gone to things like the police department. The other team clearly entered evidence not even seen by the police. So uh, big F in the chat for evidence law there. Um, just terrible. It was a terrible case start to finish. I'm glad it was short. That is the one positive thing I will say about it, aside from seeing Edgeworth as the other personality. So yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and pause here. I don't feel like continuing and doing part of another one. I thought about it, and I'm like, no, not, not after that. That was, that, that was just really, really unfortunate. So to be honest with you, Chad, I think compared to some of the other cases, I think if we were to compare... I think this might actually be in the bottom five of cases. I'm going to be honest with you, Maid Cafe would be number five, this would be my number four, and then the three other cases from game two are there. Like, like honest statement. I think it actually made the bottom five so far, which is impressive considering we've done more than 14 to be in the bottom five. But as I said before, I really did not like this case, even from like a story perspective. I just feel like it, it tried to give us like some perspective of Godot, but instead it just showed that the Phoenix universe makes no sense. And our protagonist is dumb. I feel like this kind of undermined Mia's character from the first game in particular, where she came off as like a very experienced lawyer. And I didn't really find it endearing for her to be like, again, taking murder cases, the first one. And then again, on top of that, uh, just being as incompetent as Phoenix. Like, if I'm going to play as another lawyer, I don't want to play as another Phoenix. Does that make sense? Like, I'd rather play as somebody more experienced and thinking it over. And I think that's why maybe some of the spinoff games might appeal to me. But honestly, very, very disappointed with where the game has gone so far. And honestly, given the fact that the next case is going to involve like, oh, let's let's probably bring Dahlia back from the dead. That's a good idea. Duh. We're probably going to be in the fifth episode with that. And then we're going to have to deal with the, but who was it really that I did not like at all in the second game? And I thought we made it in the bottom three cases for a reason, because I absolutely hated that. So I will not personally look forward to the next part, but I look forward to doing a review. So hopefully we'll get through it and we'll give a very, very long opinion, I think, on that last case, followed by the summary of the game. But for now, chat, let's go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. We still got some more stream time, so we'll figure something out. But from that, I'm going to say thank you for watching, and I guess we'll get through the next case next time, question mark.